window open. Looks like it's working. Looks like we got... We're working here, right? We're working, baby. We're working. Hi, I'm lesbian Sarah McLaughlin. Do what I say or I'll kill this dog. Do exactly what I say. Or little Charlie the dog is gonna be punched in the face before I put him down. Don't think I'll do it? I'm Sarah McLaughlin, I'm a crazy bitch. I'm a lesbian, that means I drive a Subaru capable of anything for just five thousand dollars a day you can foster this dog here and I'll take the money and I'll just kill the dog anyway there's nothing you can do about it because I'm Sarah McLaughlin and I don't give a fuck in the arms of the angel Fly away from here in the arms of the angels. Oh, la, 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 la. Every day, lesbians like me, Sarah McLaughlin, demand money and they use cute dogs to get it. Give me money. Or I'll kill this fucking dog, I swear to God. Good morning, bears. Hi, it's me, Owen. My kazoo is on my piano. Such a touching song. Let me uh, see if we're uh, if this is working. Just double checking at my website, hugepianist.com. I'm in a good mood today. We can't do a super long show because I have to go to the airport. I'm doing Gavin McGinnis' show tomorrow on CRTV. Uh, yeah, Crowder show today is going to be hilarious. I've been uh, writing for him all morning and it has been awesome. All right, you guys are here. Sweet. You can still catch the stream there. Why don't we combine, what does it say? Why don't we combine the ASPCA with the Feed the Children? No point in wasting good dog meat. Same with um, Venezuela. You kill that dog and I'll burn your life to the ground. Oh, hey, Professor Bear. Kodiak, Spicy Bear. Davies Bear. Corny Bear. Philoso Bear. Fuhlman Bear. This is great. We are, uh, we're, we're popping and locking. Good morning, everybody. Always torn between Thursday night shooting time or Crowder Live. Um, hi, everybody. I'm sending some through the tubes now, Kodiak. Morning Bears. All right, you guys are, are, are rocking. I love it. Okay, let's chat. I've been up since five, and I'll tell you why. I just activated the, uh, the bear phone. Let me turn this baby on. Let me turn on the bear phone. It was dead. I've been uh, MIA. It's been kind of hard to reach me because I have been inspired to keep to, to, to finish the book. It was finished before. I handed in the manuscript. But if you're going to write the good fight, I, I brought the story all the way to moving to Los Angeles or moving to Saranac Lake. And it was, uh, um, and it's a solid book. I have to rewrite some stuff, but I got so many great offers from people offering to proofread and help me edit and all this stuff. I just sent the first chapter to be proofread uh, just to the first person I saw. And uh, I tried to re respond back to everybody. I, the, ger the German dude's down. We got a Spanish translator. 
I wouldn't mind getting some Asians up in this uh, up in this piece. So I was up at 5 a.m. today writing another chapter, and I, I want to read it to you guys. It's rough. It's, it's, it's new, but I've been wanting to say this the whole time, and this is the problem with having a publisher, is you know what you can and can't say. you know. And my editor was a really good dude. I, I'm still planning on being friends with him, hopefully. But, uh, you know, it's all about vulnerability and honesty, but only in a certain area. And when you're talking about the good fight, you got to talk about, you know, getting blackballed and why. And so I wrote that chapter today and I'm going to read it to you just straight up. I don't think it's going to make it so none of you guys buy the book. There's 99% I won't be reading aloud. And to be honest, I think that the community we have here will only be more intrigued by a well-written book that I tell you about. And you guys can be part of the process. You know, let me know. I read the first chapter on here before. If you have any ideas, any insights, always let me know. You guys helped me write my last hour special, and it was amazing. All right, let's just get to some uh, some stuff, some news. So the Pope, I saw someone uh, Instagram me this. I If I don't give credit, it means that I get so bombarded with messages that are so hilarious that I'll just uh, screenshot them email them to myself. Sometimes I can't even respond to people, but I see something amazing. And then I go back in and it's, uh, I don't see where, where the person is, but I think there's a, a watermark on here to give credit where credit's due. Cause this is hilarious. Cause I've been pissed at this Pope tweet for a while now. Do we really want peace? Then let's ban all weapons. So we don't have to live in fear of war, right? What an idiotic thing to say. So somebody, uh, IG at whiskey dot and dot rebellion, I believe has a picture of the Pope surrounded by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 men and one wimp woman with guns. And it just says gun, 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 gun. And um, accepted hypocrisy is really, really annoying because he knows that he has armed guards. So he can't possibly believe that. And um, if you've read the Bible, you know that... Um, Cain killed Abel with a rock. So unless he's planning on uh, banning mountains or shorelines or um, any masonry, I'm pretty sure we have to address the fact that evil is in the hearts of man and it has nothing to do with the objects. Yesterday, I uh, did a lot of yard work. And North Country yard work looks kind of like this. So what you're looking at here is a cut down tree that my brother and um, myself and some and some fellows cut down. And now that the uh, the snow is gone, we reclaim some area. Every year there's a little more area to be reclaimed. So you have so much yard work that you can't really put it in like um, containers and put it on your curb. That's not, you know, when you're in the wilderness wilderness, you burn it. And um, so I'm burning this fire all day long. Like all this stuff in the, all that dirt there with no leaves on it, that was all like full blown forest. So I'm trying to seed it with some grass and make it look cool. And so I'm burning this all day long. And when you burn all day, the fire, the coals get so hot that you literally can't put it out. And so me and my brother had a couple beers at the fire last night. We periscoped it. It was a really good time. But then in the middle of the night, I start like getting this anxiety that the, uh, that's why I didn't sleep a lot last night because uh, I'm like, man, that fire, I mean, I, I, it's still going. And I cleared around the area really well. Like as, as, as you can see, like you can't totally see, but there's at least eight feet of just absolute dirt. And then I put the giant logs around it too. And then the rocks. So it's, it was safe fish. But when, I don't like going to sleep when there's a, um, a running fire. So I go outside at like midnight and I just start hosing it down and it doesn't put it out at all. And granted, it's not spreading. There's no situation. In fact, I could have just let it burn and get rid of some more stuff, but I, I just want it better safe than sorry. So I start shoveling dirt on it. And today I go out there still going. There's no open flame, but the smoldering, it, it, it's, it doesn't get affected by water or dirt. It's really wild. And that those coals are really good for cooking meat. If you ever want to, um, 
seal up meat and then you can bury it in the uh, coals and it just cooks it like you can cook it for 20 hours just a nice just a nice warm heat like that shit's like lava you know you can't put it out i just thought that that was pretty funny but i got to see the stars last night um they were just so so pretty all right what else we got here <clears throat> yeah because it's now it, this is what my area looks like now this is why i love saranac lake it goes from just tundra, just frigid, soul-crushing winter, which I actually like, but, you know, Amy and, and some other people are not the biggest fans of the weather. But then it's just, boom, it's just beautiful again. And uh, that was taken yesterday. And, and that's how quickly it turns from snow to green. Um, here's a picture of the back of the hoodie. This is my Twitter account that Delev runs. Um, I saw some, I think Iran was shooting missiles at... Uh, at Israel last night, so I was uh, worried that I would have to get someone else to run my Twitter because I figured Dolev was uh, a goner. But she survived pretty great, so she's still running uh, at Owen Comedy. And that's the back of the hoodie. The front of the hoodie says uh, Coolest Bear in the Woods, and they're uh, available at the Unbearable Store, unbearablestore.com. You can uh, pre-order now, ships June 1st. And I'm not responsible for any of that, which is great because I suck at, at uh, shipping at shipping uh, clothing, but you can buy this at my site. I only do like a hundred of each flask, and uh, racist ones are pretty much done. I think I've I've got all of them out, and don't feel obligated to buy them or anything. They're, these are pretty much just for people who like collecting stuff, because a lot of you guys bought my first flask, and uh, you know I I ordered more of these. These seem to be like the home run for people because you can drink right now. It's coffee, but then at a certain hour. You switch to beer. You got to know the right exact time to switch from coffee to beer. Or if you're a woman or a gay guy, coffee to wine. But these are kick ass. I'm going to get another 50 or 100 to sell because I know some people didn't get them. But the flasks are kind of like, they're real easy to ship. And um, they're not too pricey to make for me. And they're pretty sweet. It's just kind of like a hobby of mine. And this is the new one. And I had a beautiful uh, pregnant model, my wife, model uh, a nice flask. Uh, socialism always ends in uh, starvation and genocide. And it's like this leather, cool vibe and the unbearable thing. And is it, if you notice, there is a spelling error. It says socialism always end in starvation and genocide. That's how you know I made them. Because I am, as we all know, retarded when it comes to spelling. And uh, I was thinking about, me and Nimmer were talking about, he goes, you know that it says end, right? So we were riffing about whether or not I, say, I would say it's intentional, where that's your, uh, your sobriety test. I obviously can't say it's intentional. I would, I, I'm, I'm horrible at, at lying, even if it's for comedy. Because then in the future, I would forget that I lied. And I'd say, uh, and I'd say no, I, I, I fucked up. And someone would be like, no, you said... I'd be like, oh, I can't remember the truth and the non-truth. So the truth is I made a mistake. and But we were thinking how funny it would be if we uh, made it seem like it was intentional. And that's the sobriety test. Where if you don't see a grammatic or a spelling error, that means um, you're too drunk. Another thing where I was thinking about is uh, that that was dictated to me by an Asian, by, by, uh, by an Oriental. Socialism always end in starvation genocide either way it's a cool ass flask and they're 20 bucks huge pianist.com slash flask and then there's the third one coming soon as well and then i'll be done with the flask for a while i just wanted to get out um the next one is an artling picture i just want to switch it up a little bit you know because they're fun to collect i have a soviet flask that, that one of the bears gave me quebec bear great guy we've been texting lately uh, this one is a literal KGB flask. Look at that. Yeah, can you see that? That's a real flask. That's like a real KGB flask. And I think I have a couple more of them. I just find them really cool collector's items because... If you think about the man that had the flask, it's, it's, a lot of times it's a working man who just wants a little nip, he wants a little nip to get through his day. And I always think about the life of the person who owned the flask, you know, 
And that's uh, this KGB flask may, inspired me to make the socialism always ends in starvation and genocide because many times I've thought about who the person is, like who the Russian was that desperately needed booze to get through his job. And I feel like that was very common back then. I find that pretty interesting. The Boy Scouts lost 40, 425,000 boys one week after announcing the name change because they're no longer the Boy Scouts because they're letting girls in. And the people most, most hurt by this, of course, were the socialists, the feminists, and the pedophiles. You know, it's a real nightmare for them. That means that they just lost 425,000 boys that will not be broken by um, modern social justice movements, making them easy targets. I was thinking about easy targets. And, and with this uh, Schneiderman situation, our, uh, the New York, New, York, New York State's Attorney General, Schneiderman, and CNN, of course, underreported it. If you really want the report, listen to Crowder, listen to Molyneux, listen to, uh, I think Shapiro got into some, some of the nitty gritty. He isn't, he didn't, it's not just, uh, I, I, I can't stand it when people say uh, sexual indiscretion or alleged harassment. No, he was like choking and slapping chicks and making them cry and, um, uh, and he was dating this uh, this brown girl. I can't remember her ethnic origin, but uh, he called her, her uh, his brown slave. And she was not into that. And uh, a lot of these women were in their 40s and they were like feminist -y, no kid, me too type women with big careers. And so was he. He's a big me too guy and a big uh, male feminist. All, by, by the way, at this point, you do have to realize male feminists are all scumbags. Whether it's Aziz Ansari or Harvey Weinstein or Louis C.K. or any of these people, any of these people that are, you know, they 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 talk about how men need to be better, and and you know they're wearing the pussy hats and all that. They're all scumbags. They're all doing it to overcompensate for some horror. And uh, you know, I'm a feminist in the sense. Me and my brother were talking about it in the fire last night, where I'm very protective of women. I'm uh, supportive. I want them to have equality of rights. You know, of opportunity, not outcome. You know, I you can't throw as fast as men. You can't. But men are, are but you're more buoyant. Women are better at long distance swimming because they're they have better buoyancy because they're fatter. <laughs> it's true. The one uh, athletic thing that women are, are always better at is long distance swimming because it takes less effort for them because their uh, their bodies are made for buoyancy. Little known fact. They also have a higher pain tolerance. Makes a lot of sense when you think about what they have to go through for uh, childbirth. So I'm very supportive. You know, I'll work literally till death as hard as I can for my woman. <laughs> and uh, that to me is what actual male feminism is, not this horse shit. But I was thinking about... Malinu talks a lot about hegemony, 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 hegemony. Hegemony. I'm going to look it up. Hegemony. Hegemony. He I don't have a G on my computer, so I have to copy and paste the G. Hegemony. I just wrote Hemi. Hemi, Hemi. It's a freestyle. All right. I'm, I'm going to get nowhere with this. I think I wrote it down now. Hang on. Hang on one second. Oh, Field of Bears has my number now. He's a uh, he's a legit dude. All right, where is Attorney General? I write down notes about what I want to talk about. Hypergamy. Okay, so hypergamy is the phenomenon that's pretty much a fact that a lot of women feel the need to marry up. And so the women that have the hardest time with this are successful women. Like um, Hillary Clinton had to marry the one dude above her. Like Beyonce had to marry the dude above her. And like, there's like none. So what happens to a lot of these women, these feminists, is they give up um, motherhood and uh, um, marriage and all that stuff. You know, apparently Beyonce not and Hillary didn't, but uh, a lot of them... 
just just work and work and work because they're told that's what uh, feminism is, that's what empowerment is. And then they get to this point where they don't have a man to protect them. I would kill any motherfucker for my wife. Everyone knows that. If she was at all in danger, bullet to head, anybody, anytime, I would get in front of anything for her and my kids. And that's real safety. You want to talk about safety. Stable families are the safest place for women on the planet. And they can go work. They can not work. They can be moms. They can be astronauts, whatever, whatever they want. When you get a, uh, like a chess piece, like a good man to just like, be like, what do you need? And the woman in turn uh, brings that feminine awesomeness to your life and is also wicked supportive as you guys. I, I, I love that I get to show you guys what a good marriage can look like. How Amy like checks in on me and makes sure I have coffee and keeps my clothes clean and just cares. When people come at me, she helps me like game plan. She helps me spell and ship stuff. And um, she's on it with Walter. She's raising him to be a, a great man and a sweet man. Like... You get to watch that so you don't become one of these bitter guys that thinks that all women are, are just shitty. And it's easy to think that in our culture because a lot of women get real entitled and uh, real shitty. But those women are safe as hell when you have like a good man to protect you, right? So what do these male feminist leftists want? Most of them are, are filthy, disgusting animals. And you, if you hear that Harvey Weinstein tape that they have on him, where he's just desperately trying to fuck this model. And he has kids and a wife and he's just pushy. And it's not, it's not like, because in your mind, if you're a good guy, it's tough to imagine how some of this shit sounds. So that's why you have to listen to the tapes. Because uh, when someone says a pushy guy, I can be pushy. I can, I can, but that's, in my mind, it's assertive. It's more just like, let's go on a date. I promise it'll be great. I'll pick you up. Oh, I have to work. Well, you know, other days we don't work. I can help shoulder that that burden for you. Where do you work? I can come in and help uh, pour coffee for you. And then, the, you know, Amy would smile or whatever. Like that type of shit. Like in the beginning, I was pushy. Uh, but not creepy pushy. Like the type of pushy that's just like, what do you need done? Come on. I'm here for you. And it wasn't about sex. It was about hanging out. And, uh... But when you see it about with these filthy men and, the, and, and this guy, Schneiderman, would, would just call these girls like retards and uh, force them to drink liquor and beat them, you know, to the point of like tears. And I was thinking, like, why would these women allow this? They're these strong feminists. And that's the thing. These strong feminists are some of the weakest, most broken women in our society because they're 40. Their dating pool is like nine dudes because they have a six figure salary. And their, and their female instincts want to marry up. If you make 10 grand a year, marrying up is 20 grand a year. And you're fine with that. If you make one five, you, like a lot of these women are looking for a man that, that makes one six or at least has more status. And it's tough when you're one of these women. So they're, they're really in a bad spot. And because, you know, me and Crowder were talking about how in Hollywood or... If, if one of these guys had done that to his wife or my wife, we would just annihilate. Like there wouldn't be this culture of secrets and that's because they have men ready to go. But these women don't. They don't have friends. They have allies and comrades. And um, they're just in this really vulnerable spot so that these, pre these predators like Bill Clinton, Anthony Weiner, uh, Schneiderman, um, Harvey Weinstein, uh, Aziz Ansari in his own weird way, like to a lesser degree, but creepy, you know, when you misrepresent yourself, it's creepy. And, and so that's the real devil's trick, right? That feminism is really to create an environment where women are absolutely vulnerable to predators. We're 40, no kids, no husband, um, very, very small dating pool. And, uh, just, the Schneidermans of the world just clawing at him and beating him. And, and then to watch those same guys go on television as these spokesmen of the Me Too movement. And, you know, he's the guy that prosecuted Harvey Weinstein. And he was saying enough is enough and all the fucking bullshit that I talk about all the time. You know, um, it's, the, it's the soy boy lyric. It's, um, 
He's an ally to women. When he's marching in the streets, Schneiderman, but don't drink with him, ladies. He's Hillary on Facebook, but he's Bill in the sheets. Rape, he's a soy boy. He's so annoyed, he's a soy boy. He feels no joy. A weak chin and soft hands and a lot of demands. He's got mammary glands. He says his cat is trans. Cause they're like, that's real. That's what makes it so funny. That's what makes my shit undeniably funny. It's not that I'm the most talented guy in the world. It's that I am willing to be like, we all know that's true, Schneiderman. It's this. It's men that seek like big, big, big political power that misrepresent themselves are the biggest creeps on the planet. And that's one reason why Trump won is because his his douchiness. His shittiness with women, his ability to misrepresent himself and bend and twist like a salesman, he's not hiding. You know, he's the type where it's like, oh, how do you, um, you, you hate, uh, you talk, you say women are pigs. And he goes, I said, Rosie O'Donnell's a pig. And she is. And that made the country go, I would rather have someone who's like a douchey real estate guy that doesn't lie to me than a Schneiderman. Or a Hillary, where they stand up there and they say, hope, change. She's doing payouts to her husband's rapes all day long, right? Like, if she really gave a shit about women, she's not paying out her husband's rape victims and threatening them and demeaning them and slandering them so that, um, you know. And, and even that, that email leak, no one wants to talk about that, but you have, uh, what's his name, on record, Colin Powell saying that Bill Clinton is always in Harlem, uh, just like deep dick and hose or some shit. He said a real funny way of saying it too, but it was like, he was like, it's a known fact that Bill Clinton spends his days in Harlem, deep dick and hose. I'm pretty sure that's what Colin Powell said was deep dicking. It was some hilarious phrase and he didn't walk it back or apologize, which makes me like Colin Powell. Colin Powell, uh, Bill Clinton quote gotta hear that gotta bill oh is he's still dicking bimbos right colin powell bill clinton is still dicking bimbos that was released from um wikileaks her husband bill still dicking bimbos yeah it's like okay and then he said uh trump's a national disgrace all right compare the two compare a quote-unquote national disgrace who acts like he acts versus a guy who uh, pretends to be everyone's savior and really is uh, just dicking bimbos, just deep dicking those hoes. And uh, I find that to be really tragic that that these lefties are putting women in a no-win situation. I get letters from a lot of you guys, a lot of women that said that they were red-pilled or that they stopped being a feminist when they, they looked around in their late 30s or 40s and realized they didn't have kids or a husband or anything of real value except a career and a cat. And uh, you have two roads at that point. You either become one of these psycho chick, uh, you know, what's her name, that, that warlock, Ashley Judd, or you just honestly own up to it like I did. I, I lost a good chunk of my 20s to, to, to not understanding the lies that, that were put upon me. I still had a great time, but uh, it's, a real, it's a real double-edged sword, though, because I, I'm so glad that Amy's my wife and mother of my children, and I didn't meet her uh, until I was 32. Her, 32. But like, man, if I had met Amy at 22, knowing what I know now, I would have loved to have just locked it in and had fucking 10 kids. But I, uh, I believe that I was sold that um, being a man is uh, being wanted by a lot of women. And uh, it's better to be respected by a lot of people and to start a family and really just build just build that family because that family is, is the real deal. I mean, my son is just a little over two and shit's getting fun, you know? Like, he can talk now, and, and he's funny. And uh, he can't talk well. He's like, Coca nuts! But you can just see it in his eyes that he's funny, and you see, like, looks that he gives now that remind you of you and your wife. And 
it's pretty fucking incredible. And um, it's just such a, a robbery to take that from women. Because it hurts women more than men. Because men have a longer shelf life. You know, our jizz can get a little suspect at a certain age. You know, sometimes I think that's why I'm a, a wicked smart, retarded person. Because uh, my, my parents had me at 39. So I have this real strong DNA, like a crazy high IQ. But I'm also like, I uh, can't spell or read a map. Um, and I think that might come from just old jizz. But, you know, the jizz keeps till you're in your 70s. You can still crank them out. But women, they have a, they have a clock. And uh, they got to get it going. Unless they truly don't want to. Some don't. 98% do. And uh, some don't, but almost all do. All right, so let's talk. I will... Oh, paypal.me paypal.me slash feed the bear if you want to feed that bear, honey. Just like I'm a piano player at a bar. Throw me a tip. Send me a note. I'll read it. Uh, you guys have been very generous lately, which has been awesome because I do have um, some big bills. I'm paying back the publisher 20K. And uh, just had to buy a new podcasting hosting service for a year. And uh, and some of this shit ain't cheap, man. You know? Because I don't do ads. I don't do ads. And, and the podcast is getting big. That's why I had to get a lot of bandwidth. I mean, we're, we're, we're putting up some fucking numbers now. Especially because I'm, I'm uploading them daily. You know, Bob is. And, uh, you know, I pay Bob what I can, but I don't have a lot of dough especially after the 20K, but I'm getting by and, um, you know, got some flask money these days, got some rental money that's going to come in the summer. I don't mind talking about money. I think it's a real weird, fucked up cultural thing that makes people feel uncomfortable about talking about money. I think that's like this weird way to control people. So no one really knows how anyone else is doing and no one can really know what anything's worth. It's really weird. I don't mind talking about money at all. Like what shit costs, what I make, what I don't make, what I lose. Because it, it offers a blueprint to the, young, the youngins where they can kind of figure out what is worth what. And like what costs will cost what and what it's like to, to be a bit in the hole and then climb out of the hole. And when someone's doing well, they'll tell you. I think that shit's awesome. I've always been very comfortable with that. And some of my friends that I really respect are like, man... It's a little classless to talk about money like that. I'm like, dude, I, I, I saw you fucking puke on your own dick. You're going to give me a lesson in class? You fucking idiot. You know what I'm saying? Good times. All right, let me read a couple of these. And I got a couple overnight. I got to do some verifications. Um, and I also checked the, the bear phone as well. Thank you for the, the subscriptions. Huge pianist dot com slash subscribe if you want to support the show get access to the bear phone oh man i'm getting behind on the bear phone i was writing all morning i get behind on my own phone like i don't i sometimes don't get back to my brother for a few days you know so don't feel bad if that ever happens all right since the stream has started uh who sent me this one I spent an hour yesterday thinking about music theory and left and right and politics. That made so much sense. You were too smart. Did that just come to you the other day or have you thought about that before? Some request either Carry On My Wayward Song or Immigrant Song, Tony Mama Bear. Uh, it kind of came to me. You know, a lot of these things have just been kind of beating around my head subconsciously for a while. And then as I'm talking, if they just come out. But yeah, let's, let's do Immigrant Song in a bit. I think the Bears need to bring back this phrase. Uh, Marvel has been around long enough that at one time solid dick was slang for straight talk. Oh, I love that. Listen, bud, I just want your solid dick. Oh, this is Donnie Comic Bear. Oh, and I'm coming up again tonight at the comedy store in La Jolla. This will be my third ever attempt at stand-up. Afterwards, I am driving to Austin to meet with Nimmer. Awesome. Dude, Nimmer's crushing. Along the way, I'm going to be posting videos to my YouTube channel, Donnie Richardson. That's Eat Eaton, E-A-T-O-N. Box, B-A-C-H-S. Oh, uh, well, that's your email, dude. I thought that was, uh... Oh, well, that's how you can find the channel. Donnie Richardson. Uh, I'm looking to legitimize my stand-up and meet uh, an admirable Marine. Yes, Eric is a very admirable Marine. And his uh, special came out awesome. We're still doing, uh, we're still tweaking it. 
sound, cuts, bunch of stuff. That will be available very soon. My family mourns a young Marine. Um, amphibious recon. I admire Mr. Nimmer. I also admire Mr. Nimmer. Mr. Nimmer and Base Texan are two of the executive producers of UNN because I do not have the time to do it right now and I do not want it any, uh, I want it to just keep moving. I'm even telling these guys to write me scripts and they're doing a fucking great job with that. It's very impressive. And the app is pretty much done. I was uh, playing with it today. We're still working out bugs. Like uh, I got muted. I muted myself. But it's really cool. It's just um, you sign up with your bear name and it's just a running chat and it'll cross all platforms. So whether you're watching this on Owen uh, Benjamin Clips or Vimeo or um, where else am I at? Twitch, Unbearable Comedy. I don't understand Twitch yet, but I, there's some bears that seem to really understand it. I'll read two more of these and then I'll get into some other stuff. I'm working on this UNN video and I just need to know what you will be referring to yourself as. Like, what will you call yourself? I want to make it sound as though I'm communicating with you from the field. You can just call me Big Bear because uh, I'm going to be changing it a lot. You know, Gary McFirm Buns, Honey McSalmon, Salmonstein McFirm Bun. You know, there's infinite. Every every uh, episode, I think I'm going to just have a new, um, a new name because it's pretty funny that people keep sending me names to do. All right, it's a long one. Oh, here we go. I'm set up. Oh, sweet. But it's set to come out the 19th. I noticed you said some people who gave higher amounts cancel and you want to make sure that you knew I didn't cancel in case you expect on the first. Oh, well, thank you. Wow. People are so fucking nice. My dad was a good man like you. You remind me of him. Your boys have an awesome dad like I did. I love being a dad. It's what drives me. For whatever it's worth, you've got a friend in me for life. My family will always be here for yours. Sorry for texting so much. Have a great day. Um, who's this from? And when you're a real hero to me, if I could afford it, I'd quit my job and dedicate all of my work to helping you fight the good fight. No, what you're doing is fighting the good fight, man. Who the fuck is this? Oh, it's Joe. Oh, it's Knox Bear. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, Coder Bear is awesome. Yeah. That's fucking heartwarming. All right, one more real quick. Erratic Bear. I made some cool spray paint art if you thought you might like to see it. I have more planned in the future. I do mostly spray paints on canvas. Thanks for looking. Erratic bear. Oh, dude, this is sick. Look at that. Let's check out this other one. Dude, he made that. Awesome. All right, let's read some of these. And then I'm going to read you part of my book. Because I just share shit. Really, I just do. All right, what did I get from over the, like t last night? Oh, one of the bears wrote... Uh, Phil Hartman got me through my bar exam in the 90s. Can I be Key Rock Bear? Of course. Welcome, Key Rock Bear. I read that this morning, and I uh, actually downloaded a little Phil Hartman because I always like to remind people, I believe he's the greatest comedian, a comedic actor who's ever lived. Good morning. I had a character idea for UNN, but don't have the skills to make videos. I thought it would be funny to have a reoccurring character called the Progressive Time Traveler who appears in different time periods throughout history and tries to push progressive agendas like transgenderism and the Wild West or equal rights for everyone to be allowed to compete in the ancient Olympics or gladiators in the Roman games from Barely Woke. That's hilarious. I'll pitch that to Crowder, actually. That's a good Crowder um, sketch. I wrote him a sketch probably six months ago. I think they shot it where it was uh, a guy that, that just woke up from a coma from like 2009. And just to see how much has changed... In that small amount of time. Oh, that was a long one. But this is Tennessee Bear. I love Tennessee Bear. I first discovered you on Crowder around the first It's Time video and have been a big fan ever since. The live streams are one highlight of my day. The music speaks to my soul. Oh, dude, he did a great cover of That Nigga Stole My Bike. It was fucking great. Him and his brothers. The music speaks to my soul. The philosophy and insight speaks to my mind. And the rants speak to my inner animal that wants to fight and be heard. I love the rants. If you need... Uh, to say something, then you say it. You don't have to worry about speaking your mind to the real bears. Shortly after I started watching the bear feed, I felt like you were a close friend that I could open up to and talk about things that I haven't shared with many people. My wife and I, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know if you want me to read this, but um, it's not bad, but you didn't say I could read it, so I'm just going to stop now, but I just want to say uh, you're awesome. Uh, I, 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 Oh, no, I'm reading this. This is too great. 
This is too great. My wife and I were having a hard time conceiving. Much to my surprise, he responded to my email and showed some love. It was such encouragement, and I'm so proud to announce that my wife is 14 weeks along with our first bear cub. Congratulations, dude. That is awesome. Yeah, Tennessee Bears. Yeah, I, uh, I, that's, that's worth reading out loud. I mean, that's obviously a huge... Uh, hey, Owen, thanks for speaking truth to the postmodern Marxist left. My wife's a LuLaRoe independent fashion consultant, and we love to bring Amy some clothes when you're in Portland. Hell yeah. My, Amy does that shit too. LuLaRoe clothes are great for pregnancy and post-pregnancy. No, Amy does that shit too. She has it in a bit, but we got a whole LuLaRoe thing going on. Um, I got to crack that whip. We just need to know Amy's clothing size. Uh, I'll find it for you. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Trust God and all will be well. Josh. I love the name Josh. Oh, Amy can find my wife's. Oh, I'm going to plug this for everybody. This legend's wife on Facebook. Search LuLaRoe Shelly Zelaznik. Yeah. So buy some shit from Shelly Zelaznik. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got here. Huge fan from New Zealand. I listen every day on my way to university. Well, I see why. If you're going to university, I'm a fucking life raft. I, uh, if I was in college right now, all I would do is listen to shit like this because I would be so fucking angry all the time at like what people are trying to make me believe. I think what you do is awesome and hope that you will come to New Zealand. Was wondering if I could be Barrel Bear. Have a great weekend. Cheers, Barrel Bear. Welcome, Barrel Bear. I don't get how the soy is spread to uh, New Zealand and Australia, even Nebraska. I got a great email from a bear that wants to hang uh, when I'm in Nebraska at Omaha. And he was telling me that like he was in a band and uh, doing real well. And he was just having this minor discussion with a bunch of people about the wage gap. And they started like accusing him of being like all these crazy things. You have to understand the left's main move is slander. And the reason you have to really watch out for it is because a lot of dudes like us uh, don't like, we use ostracism as a way to, to enforce shit culturally, where if you find out someone's a piece of shit, you just don't associate them with them. It's a very uh, conservative libertarian move, very Western, where you just kind of like, you you enforce social uh, shit to like deal with, with people that are a problem. And uh, the key is to not allow the left to just crazy slander good people into turning on them. And I'm really lucky that I didn't lose very many good people when I was called a racist and a homophobe and a bigot and a sexist and a, everything under the sun um, because people know me well enough and I'm consistent enough where it's obvious that I'm not. But I feel for some of these people that that just get hammered and then people believe it and then their life gets all messed up. I'm about to read all about that in my book. Oh, and this is to help cover the payment to the publisher that pulled out on you cowards. Send me a copy when they start flying off the shelves. I'm a bear. Dude, you're the best. You're the best. Oh, and oh, this is a great one. Who wrote this? I can't remember who wrote me this, but uh, this is crazy true. You mentioned how John Lennon's mother tries to justify his own abandonment of Julian. My good friend Jack Baruth, who also writes about cars. Oh, this is oh, I know who this is. I'm about to plug your sweet shit, bro. I got your email. You're uh you're a main you're one of the main bears. You're always writing in. Uh touched on a similar topic in his discussion of Harry Chapin's Cats in the Cradle. And that's true. It's like The Cats in the Cradle is another it's a good song. I think I think that guy's a better guy than John Lennon, but I think he also does that fucking trick where he's trying to use determinism to kind of explain why his son doesn't like him or he abandoned his son or some shit, and it's total horseshit. This is Stiegel Bear. Oh, Stagey Bear. I've been around watching your early pods. I'm going to have to start skimming these. Some of these are are long, but as you can see, it's very hard for me to not finish them because they're so fucking good. I've been around watching your early pod since you started back in the fall right after telling the truth about not giving kids hormones. I'd like to get access to the bare phone to talk about everything from history to culture to conspiracies, future ideas, and anything else. This is one of the best places to get a hold of me and talk about crazy stuff. The bare phone, a lot of times, I just write like, ha that's hilarious, thanks, bro, or 
we're going to this bar. Uh, it's a good resource to, and especially if I get shut out of all these, um, I like how many people have bear phone number now because, uh, I want the main good, strong bears to have access to me. If I get shut out of all of this shit, who knows? PayPal's probably run on soy. Who fucking knows these days? All right. Thank you for putting, I'd like to say thank you for putting your life, career, and most importantly, family on the line for all of us. All right, dude, I got to get to, uh, to this chapter because I think you guys will really relate. Uh, analyze lyrics to closing time. I will. I did a, a song for Crowder about closing time. It was, um, I can't remember what it was about, but it was a parody for closing time. I love closing time. It's actually about childbirth. It's, um, closing time. Closing time. Time. Um, that's not it. Clo clo closing time. Time for you. song i know who i want to take me home take me home it's such a good song closing time one last call for alcohol so finish your whiskey or beer closing time and i also think the bright eyes song is about childbirth this is the first day of my life Think I was blind before I met you I went out in the rain, suddenly everything changed They're spreading blankets on the beach so pretty i love um when he goes this is the first day of my life this this line fucking kills me glad i didn't die before i met you my mom had five miscarriages before me and i think about all those all those brothers and sisters that and and like when i was born like that would have been in my head like i'm glad i didn't die before i met you mom it's so fucking intense all right, hey Owen, I'm a student right now. I'm tight on cash, but I'd, I'd like to be verified so I can send in some sweet articles to UNN. I love it. I love your heart, my, my friend. Saltwater Bear, welcome. That's my last name in German, is Saltwater. Salte Wattel. I'm excited about contributing to this awesome idea. Dude, the website's coming along like so good. And we've been having powwows just by tax, me and base tax enemy and Nimmer. But, um, unbearablenewsnetwork.com it's it's getting bigger and unbearable or owen benjamin clips has just broke 4000 subscribers because one of the reasons is i can't upload i'm in the gulag oh dude someone sent me this one this is an article by some lefty psycho i'm going to change your nappy is that okay expert claims parents should ask babies for permission before changing diapers yeah that's how you create just awful sociopaths ugh uh, do you ever analyze the lyrics to closing time? Oh, I read that one. Uh, I think I got to most of these. All right, sweet. Now we have some ones that you guys are sending today. And then I'm going to read the book and maybe a little music, but I'm flying to D.C. today and I want to be able to have a little bit of lunch with my little man and my big old woman. All right, what we got here? Anthony, what up? Just want to say thanks, making me laugh because you're hilarious, but that's obvious. More importantly, I want to thank you for uh, your resolve in spite of everything. 
The easy path is to just give up and unplug. Uh, especially from social media. Dude, I gotta read you this shit. All right, let me, um, what does it say? I truly believe the most important currency of our time is courage, and you're rich, my brother. Moot Bear, that's a great point. I had one lighter note. If you had time in the stream, because I did indeed make something, if not, no worries. Uh, the UN Women F, uh, Facebook page put up the absolute train wreck of a post a few days ago about how equality in journalism, blah, 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 while proceeding to, in the same post, state that 19% of journalists killed in 2017 were w women. If my math is right, that means 81% of men of, the, of them were uh, men. That means 81% of men were killed. Now, pardon my Kathy Newman. I, one of my um, theories is that's why they want all these new genders. Because the math is so obvious that men just keep dying at fucking work. Uh, pardon my Kathy Newman, but are they saying that they want women to die at a rate equal to men? Yeah, dude, I, I, I was trying to work on a bit called uh, death equality or the death gap. It didn't really get off, off the ground. I just kept getting attacked, but it was hilarious. Anyway, to help them out, I sort of launched a charity campaign for women to reach um, parody with the male journalist counterparts. Parody is charity. Dot com. Uh, hope you dig it, Big Bear. Keep the dude. I want that on UNN, bro. That's genius. You gotta, you gotta send that in to Unbearable Unbearable News Network. That's exactly the shit we're looking for. Where it's like, where it's like, we we need equality now. We need more women to die in underwater welding accidents. Jesse, fight the good fight. It seems fitting. Uh, how about a breakdown of "Fight the Good Fight" by Triumph? Oh, I don't know that song. Uh, UNN is fucking spectacular. The people in the office with me must think I'm retarded because I bust out laughing uncontrollably while reading the headlines. Inspector Bear. Oh, thank thank our guys. I have not a lot to do with that. I conceived it, but uh, I haven't. It, it's it's all the guys doing it. It's like I have very little to do with it right now, and it's you can just see the quality of of writing. Big Bear. I've been trying forever. Please verify me as Southern Comfort Bear. Believe in you. Love to all. Welcome, Southern Comfort Bear. Joel, can you ask the bears who are willing to help test the app to email unbearables.dev, D-E-V, at gmail.com? I will email people in batches to make sure everything holds up as we go. Maybe also mention it at the end of the stream in case people missed it. I will. That's Coder Bear, by the way. We're just debugging the app right now, and him and a bunch of other fucking legends uh, made this this app so that we can have the chat anywhere and we can we can rise above the platforms of censorship are your people so uh let me just say it one more time anybody who's willing to test the app email unbearables.dev dev at gmail.com you can do it right now let them know because we have to uh we have to test this shit yo Big Bear, you are my favorite bigoted, racist, intolerant, misogynist, homophobic, Islamophobic Nazi. Though I just think you are a B-R-I-M-H-I-N for short. I, I feel good about that title. Must be a joke there about LGBT uh, needing people who identify as things beginning with vowels to make a good acronym. But it's, oh, that's a great idea. Where it's like, are you into animal sex? They're like, why? Be like, because we want we want it to be lag bat. Yeah, because LGBT has no vowels. That's a really funny idea. Can someone remind me that in the comments, please? I'll forget. Thought to say I agree with the inherent validity of the concept of the bigotry of low expectations. However, it should be remembered that when people of different natural ability achieve a different outcome, it does hold different significance for each. Many progressive positions are a perversion of a legitimate premise, and we should endeavor to recognize that axioms we share with our foes to better understand where we diverge. To paraphrase Andrew Clavin, the left hijacks good intentions and the better impulses of men. Of course. Yeah, that's what we are just talking about with feminism. Feminism has got ha hijacked by rapists. Radicals live in prisons who, whose bars are formed by easy offense and to sway the mind still on the fence and so help people avoid cages. We should understand the pivot points. Wow, this is a, this is a smart cat here. Also, there might be a joke in identifying as a funny person, and then whenever a joke doesn't land in a set, remind the audience that the progressive thing to do is laugh. Bro, you got to write for UNN. This is fucking hilarious. I identify as a funny person, so if you don't laugh, you are attacking my identity. 
I identify as a funny man. And if you don't laugh, that means you are not acknowledging my existence. But see, that's just funny for us, but that's fine. That doesn't get anyone on the fence. That's only funny to people who like logical consistency, which is not the left. But God, do I love making fun of these fucking assholes. P.S. Socialism always ends in lactation and then he cried. Very hard to rhyme genocide. Well, you gave it a shot. You identify as a rhymer. That's great, dude. You got to stay in touch with me, man. You're a talented writer. Uh, go to Unbearable News Network and, and write in that this dude's name is Brendan Woodward. Wood. I'm not going to say his full name. I don't know if he's like fucking Dean or something. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. But his name's Brendan, boys. Keep an eye out for Brendan. Timothy. Big Bear, do you have a process or things you do to help you when you're writing comedy bits? <sighs> yes. It's all different though. I just write them down in a notepad that pretty much goes forever. And uh, then I work on them and then I do, I do a lot on stage. I'll do more on that. Uh, thanks, Westside Bear. I miss you, buddy. Hey, big boy, Roy G. Bivens here. Oh, dude, if you guys watch the uh, It's Time to Get the Rainbow Back, Roy G. Bivens steals that one. God, is he funny. He's like, his name is Roy G. Bivens and red, orange, yellow, green, blue. It's so fucking funny. It's on YouTube. My, my videos are still up for now. But uh, check out It's Time to Get the Rainbow Back from the Gays. It's a good one. Can you play Ooh La La by Faces? Crowder got it stuck in my head now. Also, the book is sounding great. Oh, thanks, Roy G. Bivens. I don't know that song because I'm not a, fu a full-blown gay guy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Ooh La La. I'll write it down just because you're Roy G. Bivens. If you hear Walter crying, Amy's, I can hear Amy with him. Sometimes he just spirals a little. He's completely fine. Liam, hey, Owen, before I get to the question, you have been very helpful. Um, I, have to, I, I, I can't read the long ones, boys. Darn it. Come on. I have dysphasia in which is the extreme difficulty in producing new schema in the brain. For example, when you first learn what a car is, you produce new schema to distinguish between different types of cars as trucks, vans. You've helped me in finding different ways to produce new schema words, how to form arguments, etc. So I'm able to better interact with people and to think critically. I'm trying to push it to another level. I'll read the whole thing. This is fucking fascinating. I've never even know what schema means. I'm trying to push it to another level now by constructing new jokes to produce new schema in the brain. Now I'm trying to write a bit in which the main character is the butt of the joke. And I was hoping to get some help on better constructing the joke. I love it. I love this shit. My bit involves a man in a workplace overhearing a rumor that there's a wage gap in the air. Out of fear and anger, he decides to scream and put on a penis hat. He believes the wage gap is sexist towards men. He goes out to the public with some phys ed teachers and college students to pro protest the sexist issue. When asked why he's doing this with a penis hat on, he states that the wage gap is sexist towards men because while women make 70 cents on the dollar, men only make 33 cents out of that dollar. I feel that there isn't... Oh, oh buddy, I don't know. Hang on. He states that the wage gap is sexist towards men because while women make 77 cents on the dollar, men only make 33 cents of that dollar. That's funny. Women only make 77 cents on the dollar. It's like, so that only leaves 33 cents left for the men. Actually, 32. The trannies get a penny. And someone's like, oh no, it's 77 on the dollar. It's like, I know what it is. There's a dollar out there and the women take 77 cents of it. And that leaves 33 left between us and the trannies. I'm going to put on my dick hat and I'm going to scream like a damn woman. I feel that there isn't as much of a punch to the joke as the pound me too joke. And I feel the joke is a bit rushed to the punchline. Was hoping uh, what improvements I could make on the joke. Thanks in advance. Well, an easy racial thing you can do is bring in the Asians. Because Asians are the only group like the whites that no one cares if you make fun of them. Especially... If you are making fun of how good they are at math. So <clears throat> you could do something on. Um, so if women get 77 cents on the dollar. That means men only get 33. So they started a movement. And oddly there were no Asians in the movement. Because the Asians had done the math. And realized that it was more of a ratio. Uh, you know something like that. that. That could be a long. Be like okay so. Alright I love this type of shit. 77 cents on the dollar. 
Okay, you have to spell it out better. So when you say 77 cents on the dollar, men only make 33 cents out of that dollar. You have to say, if women make 77 cents on every dollar, what does that leave for men? Well, I've done the math. Me and the boys have all done the math. And if there's a dollar and women take 77 cents, then that means we only get 33. 32 after the trannies take their penny. And now that we got some of these other genders, like the goddamn unicorn kin, they're going to try and get in on this too. It's time to get more than just 32. You know, you like spell it out because I didn't get it at first. But that's really funny, dude. Good work. Heather, why doesn't my man like comedy? I'm 43. Only two men in my life and both seem to not enjoy it with me. My man likes you and what you're doing, but I seem to attract Christian judgy men that also don't enjoy jokes or comedians. Give Ames and the Cubs my love. She is a good influence on me. Take the Christian man. I'm telling you, there's a lot of scumbags out there. Even if he doesn't like comedy, you like comedy. Stick with that guy, though. I like the Christian judgy type. They're, I, I, honest to God, I used to be in, somewhat annoyed by those guys, but they were right about so much shit at this point that you just have to be like, all right, I'll go do my comedy thing. You continue to push uh, the morality that our nihilistic world is now losing. So stick with that guy. And uh, um, some people just don't like comedy, I guess. I mean, don't get me wrong. That sounds slightly buzzkillish, but he's probably a great guy. Hey, Owen, I about peed my pants when you said women are more buoyant. I was a long distance swimmer and it's true. Oh, it's wicked true. Want to know what else is true? Just about everything else I say. (laughs) <laughs> like even at like a Native American wrote on my Facebook, like, man, that's so true about our drinking problem. It really is that we don't pass out. And I'm like, I know. Like that's, that's why Native Americans make horrible drunks is because they don't pass out. Like when Caucasians or blacks or um, Asians, if we drink 30 drinks, we're out cold. A Native American is fucking chasing Buffalo. So they're that drunk. They're just not asleep. All right. Also, I love the chats you have with your mom. I had the same dynamic with my insanely smart dad. He literally had uh, an IQ of 161. Well, mine is 29 points lower. That's a great range, though. That's the, that's the best smart range to be is 29 points lower. That's a great range because it means you're like ridiculously intelligent, but you're not like crazy. All right. I really miss those conversations with him, but listening to you and your mom is so nostalgic for me. I really... Have a hard time finding people to talk to that way since he passed in 2000. Treasure those moments. Wow. Trust me, I do. I, I know how special my parents are, and thanks for putting it in perspective. Pinder. Owen, heading out to my friend's ranch Saturday for a campfire meetup and hog hunt. Wishing you were in the area so you could come. I will post video. On a different note, I turned 51 in two weeks, and the jizz is still good. Great to hear. Made another son who was born last October. Uh, always been uh, best wishes to you and your amazing family. Yeah, no, 51, still strong jizz, guys. Still strong jizz. I think uh, 70s, you might start getting jizz issues, but I have buddies who have really old dads. Theo Vaughn's dad was 70 when he was born, and Theo's a fucking stud. Jeremy, maybe millennials are dumber slower because women are waiting longer to have babies and they're having to settle for stupid men. Not universally, but a general trend. Or, of course, ADD isn't helping by electronics. If Steve Jobs didn't let his kids have iPods, iPads, why are we? I think um, it's like what I said about the pampering kids. Like, you have to get permission to put a diaper on. It's people are starting to become subservient to their own babies and toddlers because they don't believe in themselves because they know they suck. I, all right, I can't wait to read what I wrote. Oh, Landon, thanks, buddy. Deep Dicking Hose in Harlem, Memoirs of My Jungle Fever, written by 42. Hope this helps with the book issues. Wishing the best for you and yours. That was very generous, Landon Doctor. Kyle, I don't like when women get abortions, say they are pro-choice. They are choosing low-quality partners who they are having unprotected sex with at times in their life when they know they can't support a child. They are uh, definitely not pros at making choices, and I'm hesitant to let them make another choice, especially with my tax dollars. Turkey Bear, well said, my friend. Yeah, pro-choice. No, more like pro-mistake. You know, now with the welfare state and all this abortion and all this shit, it's like women now just choose shitty guys. When back in the day, it was very, very sacred. Who Like men had to work to get female attention. Now you just need a fucking shirt. Jennifer, happy to feed the bear. Corny bear, I love you. Christopher, 
Uh, really love what you do. So happy to have access to the thoughts of a fun, musical, honest, loving, creative, thoughtful, and strong man. I uh, love you, bud. This is long. I can't read the whole thing. I, I just honestly can't. Dog, uh, honorary bear. Yeah, you're verified, honorary bear. But uh, I got to get to this book. Eric, thanks for coming out uh, as a freedom and liberty loving comedian. I don't, th- we all are. That's what I don't fucking understand about these comedians. Also enjoying your contribution to Crowder's show as well. Don't feel weird about uh, talking about money. Kids need to understand the cost, life, and how to make a living to support your family. 100%. My dad was great at explaining to me what he would make, which was low, but how to budget it and how to make your money grow so you can have passive income so you're not uh, reliant on other people. And it was, it, it truly is, that's what privilege is. It's having married parents to talk to, to teach their kids uh, life lessons. It's not skin tone. And my, it, there's a great book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where it's about learning the, um, you know, how to, how to handle money. And, and at any level, like there's weird little ticks of investment where you can budget in ways to just get ahead. I'm a husband of, uh, fa- uh, and father of four. Youngest son turns one next week. Congrats. Sent you an email detailing a couple holsters I'd like to make for you and Amy. That'd be awesome. But right now I'm in Kami, New York, where, you know, well, we are moving now. So I'll, I'll, I would, I would be honored to have a holster, but, uh, open carry is not even close to possible in New York, but, uh, I fucking hate New York state. All right. Mama bear needs to carry one too. She does. I dig the drinking bear flag and would like to put that on your holsters. That would be amazing. You should sell those to the bears. Uh, come to Wisconsin, so we hoist some great beers. I'm also a home brewer and need a bear stein. Keep on killing it. I'll send you a bear stein ASAP. Email me your uh, your address. I'll send it as a as a thank you gift for just being awesome, dude. A guy who makes holsters and fucking brews beer in Wisconsin. It's like my dream. All right, I'm gonna read this shit now. This is just another chapter I wrote this morning. Needs work, but let me know uh, if you guys have any ideas. And I just wanted to kind of outline, this is the shit I couldn't talk about in the book previously. And now I can, which is pretty great. All right. uh, Where is it? Where is it? So it's all broken up in, in dates. And so most of it is about the good fight is about um, is about getting Amy and get, and like having our relationship work, and getting through stuff and and just surviving. Let me find this. Here we go. But the, one of the biggest fights of my life has been this this stuff with my career. So I'm just going to read you a section that I wrote this morning. It's um, it's called a hill to die on. So the 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 chapter before is just a nice chapter about coming to Saranac Lake, and because every chapter is going to have kind of a cliffhanger, not a cliffhanger, not like a forced one, but just real struggle that we've been through, and survived. But this, this is called date twelve hundred, a hill to die on. People are full of shit, especially in cities. After moving to a small town, I could feel the toxicity from being crammed into some weird science experiment of population density uh, leave me. When you're in a city like Los Angeles and a business like entertainment, the nerves start to fry and your core becomes fluid. Really, really weird things like um, being asked to go to a sex party and, and you're expected to bring snacks don't set off the alarm bells that they should. So that's also in the book. Uh, we didn't attend the sex party, but Moby was there. And uh, it's very weird. It's another section of the, of the book. It's called Bring Snacks. Ugh. Anyway, the more time passed, the more the LA world that I was still exposed to on a regular basis via Twitter and Facebook seemed, to put it mildly, insane. Bear in mind, I'm, at this point in the book, I'm, we're now in Saranac Lake, away from LA. I have a friend who was in a cult his entire childhood. 
When he first watched an action movie at 13, he started violently shaking because he thought it was real. That is how culted out he was. I have a vague understanding of that now that I've left Los Angeles and the deep programming had begun. I never considered myself a particularly moral person. Sure, I felt I knew what was right and wrong. What I, I sure I, I knew what right and wrong was. My friendships were long and healthy, and even in my darkest days, I always wanted to be good. But a beacon of family values, I was not until I was. The stillness of country nights. The consistency of my now stable and growing family and the fact that a little dude called me dad dad now all led to my deprogramming. It all came to a head one night on Twitter. I saw that some well-known and industry-connected guy had a transgendered son he was calling a girl's name. The kid was five. I tweeted the guy that it was wrong to do that to a little kid. In my lower stress, healthier environment, I could plainly see how abusive and weird it was for a grown man to tell his five-year-old son that he was a girl. Apparently, my former community of Hollywood did not see it that way. The swarm was immediate and vicious. Twitter ap- handle after Twitter, Twitter handle started to chime in, you're gross, you're human garbage, kill yourself, you're transphobic. Transphobic? Me? My piano teacher got a sex change when I was nine, and I never hated Lucinda for it or Larry. Nice try, guys, but I'm no spring chicken to this whole trans thing. Well, this was all happening. The father, his name is Jesse Thorne, kept writing to me, we are doing what is best for our daughter. And you don't understand, but this is what she needs. It was so creepy. I kept waiting for my friends, my cohorts in the comedy world to jump in and agree with me. The obviously right one, that this was wrong. Silence. The mob kept coming. I must have been called human garbage and told to quote unquote kill myself 10,000 times in one night. It was surreal. And not just anonymous Twitter eggs, blue check marked, verified, quote unquote, real Hollywood human beings. But I wasn't backing down. Quote unquote, would you put your son on hormone blockers so he doesn't go through puberty? I asked Jesse Thorne publicly and bluntly. We will do what's best for her. Is that a yes or a no? I would repeat. We will do what her doctors advise. So that's a yes, you sick bastard. You will make your son infertile to indulge your sick virtue signaling. We will do what's best for our daughter. Son, I replied. The swarms would chirp in and whispers and screams. Stop attacking this poor girl. Stop attacking this trans child. You hate her. You hate this poor child. Stop attacking. I'm the only one defending this child and he is not on Twitter because he's five, only his sick father is. The eye of the social justice siren, the eye of siren of social justice was now looking right at me. The shame mob started tweeting to my manager and agent at CIA. Did you know your client is transphobic and hates children? They would write, like a school of piranhas with the attack frenzy of a predator yet the pathetic weakness of floundering prey. The Twitter shame mobs whirled around me and everyone close to me in Hollywood. It's hard to describe online shame mobs to people who haven't been through it. Sure, most people have had conflict online. People have blocked them or written snide remarks. Sometimes even a group of someone's former friends will coordinate some nasty comments and whisper campaigns. But a full-blown, all-out shame mob that results in actual slanderous blog posts and articles read by millions of people is surreal. You feel like you're floating, like you just want to say anything to get them to stop. You want to apologize and murder them all at the same time. You shake. I felt sick. I wanted to th- you want to throw your phone in the lake, but you can't take your eyes off it. But I didn't apologize. I didn't kneel. I didn't beg the forgiveness of an evil mob. I stood my ground because this was a hill to die on. Jesse, Jesse Thorne is, a ba- is big in the NPR podcast world. Lots of very powerful people are connected to him and began DMing me to stop and that I should see his side. What side? A guy who said he could tell his son was really a girl before he was two years old? That's my son's age. This is an innocent age of exploration and fumbling through mouth sounds. That isn't true. And the more I looked at my son sleeping beside my wife in his shark PJs nestled next to his mama, the more protective of this little boy out there somewhere I became. I wouldn't kneel. 
This was a hill to die on. I realized the next day my career as I knew it was over. I started getting calls from my agents and managers. I didn't answer. I was literally shaking from being called human garbage for 24 straight hours, and I couldn't talk to these people and their strategies and their game plans. Very soon, UConn, a college that signed a contract to pay me $7,500 to perform, would send me a letter telling me the show was canceled due to my quote-unquote transphobia. I tweeted it. More schools, more gigs, more doors started closing, one after another. Faster and faster, the money stopped flowing. The approval from these neon gods of Hollywood turned sour, and I knew I had to answer the phone. Long story short, everyone dropped me. I wouldn't apologize or stop what I was saying or standing for, so they both dropped me, just like that. I'd never had another manager or another agency. Why would I? CAA was the best and the biggest and the most powerful agency in Hollywood, and they had signed me over a decade before when I was just a busboy. They had the power to allow Harvey Weinstein to rape and beat the biggest stars in Hollywood without any recourse. Sure, everyone knew. And it didn't matter. It was with CAA, the best. With that kind of power, he could pop a, uh, Harvey Weinstein could pop a Viagra before a cocktail party and just start slapping and raping with the impunity of a Dark Ages Pope. Oprah and Merrill, the champions of women, would sing his praises over the pleads for help from his victims and the eventual did I do good whimper as a famous actor left his room. CAA was almighty, and they found me disgusting. My manager is a good dude. I was his first producer credit, High Five Till It Hurts, our special Comedy Central, first thing he ever produced. Since then, he's produced movies that have won Oscars. He's huge now. So, he couldn't deal with my antics. I'm not being sarcastic when I say he is a good dude. He really is. I hold no animosity toward, toward him. A bit of a coward, but I still like him. So there I was. No money, no reps. My name had been decimated by people I thought were my friends just uh, just a few days before. I called my brother and told him we needed to have a fire and we needed beers. He was in. He's always in. He's my brother. I then told him I needed work and I could haul brush and gas up his chainsaw. He was in. I was out. I was now a tree guy again. My entire career turned to ash in less than a week. My crime? Refusing to comply with the horrific notion that a tiny little kid is capable of switching his biological sex. Amy was proud of me. Many women would have left their man at this point. My earning potential went from awesome to awful. My status went from movie star adjacent to infamous hater of children in under a week. Amy told me she wanted her son to be the type of man I was to stand for something good. And she had never been more proud. We'd go down to one car, we'd make it work. We hugged, I slept, and slept and slept. I was so tired. Day 1230, and then I gotta go. Scrabble Rabble. We love to play Scrabble, it's a great date. There's just enough competition to be exciting, but it's still Scrabble, so there's a lot more laughing than silent strategizing. She wasn't worried about our future, I was. She had more faith in me to keep our house afloat than I had in myself. <clears throat> we just bought a rental property that needed a new roof. And that Yukon date, as well as eight more that were now canceled, were an integral part of exactly how we would pay for it. Triple word score. I can't believe she didn't see that coming. She left herself wide open. Even before my tiles were laid, my mind had drifted to the horrors of credit card debt. The game started to shift to a more defensive Soviet block of tiles that offered little more than two or three word opportunities. We realized the words of the game we had been spelling out were oddly negative. Dead, hate, debt, credit card debt. Just kidding about the last one. But it was bizarrely accurate to my subconscious and my fears. You did the right thing, she said. I knew I, knew I did. I oddly never questioned my decision to not apologize and beg Satan for forgiveness. It just sucked. It hurt. Walter was looking at me with big eyes and more and more articulations of da-da. I didn't want to let him him down. He learned the word more, which really changed my life as, as well around this time. More, he would say, as I would fling him in the air so I would throw him higher. More, he would say, as I jogged with him in his big jog stroller. I would be tired, but I knew I had a few more miles in me. I mean, how do you argue with the simple reality of more? I didn't want to let this kid down. And I knew I had more in me. Maybe a lot more. More, he would say as we ate dinner. I'd then stuff myself like a pig. 
Little did I know it was the only word he knew, but it was changing me. More, he would say as I scribbled jokes on a piece of paper. He was right, by golly. There were more tags to this joke. And after his eighth more, it dawned on me that I had settled on the punchline too early. I had a better one. I had more. The kid had real talent. As I'd haul brush with my brother to make enough money to pay the heat, student debt, cable that I would soon shut off to save money, more would repeat in my head. And I would keep going. Despite knowing that I went from $7,500 an hour to $20 an hour, it didn't matter. More was more. The kid was a genius. One day, as my one-and-a-half-year-old trainer, Walter, was screaming more as I chopped wood, I got a DM from Joe Rogan on Twitter. He was interested in what had happened to me and wanted me to come to his show. It was one of my favorite podcasts. Joe is a hero of mine. It had the listenership equivalent to doing The Tonight Show 40 times, and I was dying to tell my side of the story. More, Walter said. Okay, I said back to him as I plunged further into credit card debt on my Delta app buying a ticket to Los Angeles to be on the great Joe Rogan experience. The grin on my face was so big. I think Amy, who rarely swears, just said, what the fuck are you smiling about? (laughs) Yeah. That's, uh, I wrote that this morning. That, 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 those are the parts that I'm so glad I get to add now. That's, that's the good fight guys. The good fight was getting Amy, getting out of the darkness, the, the apps and the uh, hedonic treadmill and the fighting and the the threats to break up and all that stuff get, to get out of that. But the good fight came later. Let me read these and then I got to go. I have seven minutes. If I don't get to yours, I, I really apologize. Uh, you don't have to read this out loud. All right, I will, I will uh, save it. John. Sorry, Amy Schumer already identifies as a funny person and demands the crowds to laugh. Ha. I also heard you uh, talking Bible yesterday and your struggle with the word meek in Matthew. Here's a nice tool that can help you understand the original meaning of words written. Uh, check it out, guys. It's biblehub.com slash Greek. I love that. I will dive deep into that. Mike, uh, Thumpy Bear. Bit of a long message. Uh, Man, I got to uh, say this one. Owen said something the other day about Netflix comedians having lazy fans. This um, This is so true. What makes the Bears very special is that we do shit. We make shit. We think deeply about world issues, and we are on the cutting edge of comedy, and most of us are for free markets, property rights, non certified governments, non centralized governments, and freedom of speech. The collective unbearables are already a force that's larger than any single leftist cult comedian or tool of the state who tries to shut down free speech, and we're just getting started. Wow. Big Bear mentioned Tim Ferriss' interview with Jamie Foxx. That is one of Tim's top 10 epic podcasts for sure. But Tim's number one of all time, in my opinion, is with Terry Crews. Uh, One thing that they talked about is courage. God will not have his work made manifest by cowards. Fear begets more fear. Dude, I love this, man. I'm going to read this after because I see you wrote a lot. And I do have to, I literally have to catch a plane. But you're the man. James. Hey, Big Bear. Two quick things today. Small tip. There's a buck, 77 cents. There's 23, not 33. Oh, that's a good point. I just went with what he fucking said. That's hilarious. Yo, uh, Liam, 23 cents, not 33. For the joke, maybe hit on it that they're unhappy with making 77. Marry a man and get the full dollar. I don't know. Maybe there's something there. But women controlling their man's money. Professor Bear, that's hilarious. Jace, hey, Big Bear, open some mail. You should have an envelope. Oh, fuck. I got a, dude, I got a ton of mail. I, I can't today. I'm, I'm sorry. I will. I promise. Liber, Libertas in Utah. The extra book is for your brother or a bear. All the best. Stampy Bear. I love you. I love you, Stampy Bear. I was up for two days. Any update on how to pre-order your book? If you can, please do not use Amazon. They charge almost 30% to sell your book on their platform. Uh, not yet. I still, uh, uh, I'm just, it's just one thing at a time. I'm trying to write the best fucking book I can, and then we're going to fucking crush um, sweet. Comment on here. Email me at why didn't they laugh at gmail.com or paypal.me slash feed the bear. Let me know what you thought of that chapter I just read to you. Did it move you? Was it too long, too short? Thoughts? You know, don't be unnecessarily critical if you like it, but if there is something you think I should change, tell me. And, um, thank you all so much for everything you do and, and make sure that you hit up, um, uh, the unbearable app, I think it's dot dev 
at Gmail. I can't remember the exact one right now, but I said it earlier. And uh, flasks for sale, hugepianist.com slash flask. Um, some tickets still available for Bellevue, Washington. We're almost sold out. It's, it's going to be a big one. Uh, Portland's looking strong. We're two-thirds sold out. Um, Richland, we're about half, which is good, given that it's a small town in eastern Washington. But that's great for early May, and the shows are in June. But if you want tickets, get them early. Uh, hugepianist.com. Spread this shit. Subscribe. Why didn't they laugh on um, iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get podcasts? Vimeo.com slash Owen Benjamin. Um, I'm on Twitch, which I do not understand how it works, but I know I'm I'm going on there right now. Unbearable Comedy. I'm on um, Owen Benjamin on Minds.com and uh, wherever you can find me. I'm banned from Twitter, but you can still subscribe to my YouTube at Owen Benjamin Comedy. I got a lot of great videos on there if you guys want to watch them. And um, yeah, support each other. You know what I'm saying? Like make cool shit. UnbearableNewsNetwork.com is run by Nimmer, Texan, all these guys, and they're crushing. Jengis Bear, um, you know, Coder Bear, and those guys are crushing the fucking app. But um, there's only so much of me, and I love that you, like, just what uh, Freeze was talking about, like, the bears fucking do shit. And we're mighty. And I love you guys. And I will see you soon. I'm heading to uh, Washington, D.C. to do Gavin McGinnis' show. And I'm, uh, I recorded a show with uh, Stefan Molyneux that should be up on his network soon. And uh, joy not soy, baby. Don't eat that soy. Keep your cock. But keep that joy, baby. Keep that joy. Make babies. Stay hydrated. Peace.